All right, so I want to talk today about how to do redirects from a service worker with simply adding a custom response object. So it's actually quite a simple thing. So let's take a look at a possible application of this. Here I've got a web page and I've got a link here that points to the same web page. So when I click on it, my page just reloads. That's all it does. So it's making a request for index.html and that's the page that we're on. If I jump in here, we can see here is the anchor tag. I click on it. I'm loading the same page. Just filler content, a little bit of basic CSS. Now let's say here that I have another page, a custom page that I want to occasionally, say 50% of the time, I want to display this one instead of it. So when somebody clicks on a link to go to the index.html file, my service worker is going to accept that request and say, okay, let's do the calculation 50% of the time. I'm going to send this custom page instead of index.html. Back in the browser, what it's going to look like is this page, custom.html, is going to appear. We click on a link for index, but we're going to see this page instead. Okay, so maybe there's something that we want to do some a b testing on maybe there's something where every once in a while i have this special you know one hour a day i'm displaying a different version of the home page so how do we do that how do we do this redirect i've got a link to a script it's the same script on both these pages the css the javascript is the exact same for the two html files inside of here nothing yet but we're going to register a service worker and use that. So we'll check. It's always good to do feature detection. Navigator.serviceworker. We want to make sure that the browser supports service workers. And if it does, we will register one. So I'm going to register the one that I have right here. It's at the root. It's called sw.js. Now there's not currently anything inside of here. Here's the file right here, sw.js, that I'm loading. It's an empty file right now, but I do have it. So inside of the service worker, let's add a few event listeners and a few console log messages. So we're going to listen for the install event. When that happens, we'll just console.log installed. We'll add a listener for the activate event. Same idea, we're going to have just console.log and message. And the other listener we want to have in here is listening for the fetch event. When this happens, we'll start with just a console log, but this is where we're going to do the main part of our work. So this is the URL that's being requested. So every time the HTML file wants to load a file, image, CSS, font, JavaScript, HTML, any file whatsoever, if the browser makes a request on behalf of that web page, it's going to go through this service worker. As long as we're on this origin, and there we go. So, so it's installed, it's activated. It requested the HTML file, then the CSS, then the JavaScript. Um, then I've got a Chrome extension that's being requested as well. But there we have it. All the fetch requests are coming through here. So let's clear that out, refresh, and look once more. Yes, there we go. Installed, activated, did all this. Now it did the installed and activated again because inside of my application tab, I do have update on reload. If I get rid of that and I come back here and I refresh, all right, let's clear this out just to see. I'm just getting the fetch requests. I'm not getting the install and activate it again. So I'll turn this back on just until we've got the service worker finished, then we'll disable that. Now inside of here, in my fetch request, 
what I want to do is I want to find out, okay, what's being requested. So we'll create a variable called URL. It'll be a URL object and we will pass in the request URL that's coming from the browser. So what page is being requested? I want to find out the mode for this. Uh, this is particular to what I'm doing right here. The mode property of the request, if it's set to navigate, if that's the value of this, the string navigate, it means that it's an HTML file that's being requested. You're navigating from page one to page two. It's a new document that will replace the current page. That's what the mode navigate means. So we'll check for this. We'll say um, if mode is navigate. And we can also check to see if we're doing a local request as opposed to an external one. Good thing to check for. So if the origin for this request, whatever that is, if that is the same as the URL that I'm currently on, the origin that I'm currently on, it means that it is a local web page request. And we'll just say a local HTML file request. Now my determiner, hey, are you, you know, let's do that 50% of the time. It doesn't have to be this. We could look at what's the current time of day or some other factor. I'm just going to do this to say, hey, if it's an odd number or an even number second, that's a pretty good way to determine if it's a, uh, or we're doing something 50% of the time. So we'll get seconds. There we go. This will give us the number of seconds within the minute. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. So those numbers, if we take that number and we divide it by two, if the remainder is zero, it's even, else it's odd. So inside of here, I will say, if I take the seconds number and I divide it by two and the remainder is zero, there we go. So now I'm dealing with 50% of the time. All right, I will add an else onto this one. So if it's not an HTML request that is local, what do I want to do? Well, I'm just going to let the whole request go through. So we will respond with, this is what the service worker wants to do. It wants to be able to send something back to the browser. When the browser makes a fetch request, so it's asking for a file, I'm going to respond with, hey, go to the server and get whatever that request is. And that's what I'm responding with from my service worker. So this will just, hey, you asked for a CSS file. Here's the CSS file. You asked for a JavaScript file. Here's the JavaScript file. So we're just quickly looping through all the requests and sending them on their way to the server and then sending them back to the browser. Now inside of here, this is where we do the custom thing. So 50% of the time, we're going to do this. So 50% of the time, we're going to say, let's create a response object. So resp equals new response. And this is what we're going to respond with. So we'll put some stuff in there in just a moment, but ev respond with this response object. Now, the other half of the time, I'm going to do the exact same thing as I was doing right here. There we go. So if it's an even second, I'm going to do my custom one. Else, do the normal thing. So you asked for index.html. 50% of the time, I'm going to give you index.html. All right. Now inside of here, in our custom response object, what are we going to send back? Well, the body is going to be an empty string. There is going to be nothing that I'm sending back. I need, I do need to set a status. I can set status text as well if I want. I'm going to do 307, which is a temporary redirect. That's what the status code 307 means. And then headers. This is where we do our custom thing. Inside of here, I'm going to say my cache control header is going to be set to max age equals zero, no store. So don't cache the response that I'm giving you. It's 
only good for right now. Don't try and hang on to it and give this to the browser or give this to the user later on if they ask for it again. It's a temporary file. That's all it is. And the redirect itself, we set the location header and we can put anything we want inside of here. What we're going to do is our custom page. Now we could have saved this inside of the cache. Uh, this file could be saved in the using the cache API. So we've actually got the copy of the file there that we're bringing it back from. But I'm going to just send this back so that the browser knows, oh, I asked for index.html, but you're telling me that I should get this. I will do that. I will get this right now. And there we have it. That's it. That's the whole thing. So back on here, let's refresh. Oh, we've got uh, error happening here. Seconds is not defined. I declared it as second. Yes, there we go. Seconds. Save that. Refresh. Okay, this looks good. So clear that out. Hit refresh. Installed. Activated. There we go. And there we have it already. There's our custom page. So in here, I'm going to turn this off, the update on reload. I don't need that anymore. But from now on, I can click on the link to index.html. And 50% of the time, I'm going to get index.html. And the other half of the time, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this custom page. So I can just keep clicking. And it's going to give me one or the other. And that's it. That's all we need to do to build a custom redirect. It's just building a custom response object. And in the headers, set location equal to the thing that you want. So I'm sending this location back to the browser. And then the browser is making a request for this file. Because we're telling it, hey, this is actually the file that you want. You asked for index.html. That doesn't exist anymore. That's what we're saying here with this status is we're pretending that it doesn't exist anymore. And this is the replacement page. All right. So hope that helps you out, gives you some more ideas of things that you can do in your service workers. And as always, thanks for watching.